All right, guys, so this is a brief tutorial on how to utilize off-camera flash for portraits outdoors. Now, it's kind of late in the evening. It's a little bit, it's gonna be battling uh, with some exposures and I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this thing. This video right now is for newbies. This is for people who are interested in utilizing or who are afraid of off-camera flash and wanna learn how to get into it and get started and get rolling with off-camera flash. My assistant, Lionel, who's here with me today, has actually asked me to do this video to give him a brief overview of how do I utilize off-camera flash to light a portrait. You hear a lot of photographers out there saying that I only shoot natural light. That actually is, what that really means is, is I'm petrified of flash. So we're gonna talk about flash tonight and how to utilize off-camera flash. Let me just you, let me show, you the, show you the setup over here. It's a little bit dark, I apologize. Okay, so first things first, we're utilizing a MagMod softbox. It's called the MagBox. And in the back, we have two, and I really don't need two, but I've got two Godox AD200s here. Right now they're at their minimum setting, which is 1 128th power, which is next to nothing. Over here, I'm doing something for the first time. I'm actually testing out a Nikon Z6. A Nikon Z6. I've never used a Nikon Z6 before. I'm a, I'm a Nikon guy, I like Nikons. I've been utilizing my D4, my 750. I was a little bit underwhelmed and a little bit disappointed with the Z line of cameras when they first came out. My buddy Dan, who you met from a previous video, well, actually, it was the one I bought the um, D750 from. Let me borrow this, and we're utilizing two amazing portrait lenses. We've got the 200 millimeter f2 here. This is an old school beast of a lens. This thing's a monster. It's beautiful for portraits. We're also utilizing the Z85 1.8. Fantastic lens. I say that, I've been told it's a fantastic lens. I've never actually used it. So here's my opportunity to use it today. So I'm utilizing a Z6 adapted to the 200 f2. First time I've ever done that. And then we're gonna take the Z6 and put in the 8518. We're gonna light this beautiful subject that we have back here. This is Alexa, she's amazing. We'll tag her on Instagram. Uh, she's been doing some work with us earlier in the day. It's gonna be great, we're gonna have a good time. The challenge for us right now is, you, this is probably not the best scene for newbies, but the challenge right now is that we're outdoors and the light's going down and it's going down fast. So we're gonna to have to balance between ambient and flash and it can be a little bit of a challenge, but we're gonna make it work. So let's get rocking and rolling. So let's talk about the setup first. We're gonna start with the 200 millimeter F2. And again, we're utilizing a Z6 here. We have Alexa, our model over here, who's gonna be posing up, and she's dressed in her 1950s style outfit. It's very dark here right now, so she's probably not super visible, but that's okay. We're gonna make her look great, that's the objective. I'm triggering these two AD200s with the X-Pro, which is Godox's trigger. The beauty of this trigger is that, or the beauty of these flashes is that they are cross-compatible with virtually every system. I have a trigger for Fuji, Olympus, Sony, Canon, Nikon, it works with all of them. It's really amazing. It's a wonderful system to utilize. Um, I also have Pro Photos, but they're 10 times more expensive. And if I'm on the run, this is a great setup. It's portable, it's lightweight, it's easy to carry around, easy to travel with, and easy to set up and show somebody how to utilize these things for off-camera flash photography for portraits. All right, so you ready to do this thing? Let's roll. All right, Alexa, you ready? So the first few shots, I'm gonna be testing out my lights because it's, it's kind of dark, but I'm gonna have you starting like leaning up against this wall right here. All right, and I kind of want you to angle your body back just a little, yes, that's actually just perfect like that. She doesn't have to do anything. By the way, the beauty of working with a model who's worked before, it's so cool because they know, they know what they're doing. It's really hard. If you're not really good with posing and you, don't have, a, you have a model who's just volunteered or a friend who just says, yeah, I can do that, Sometimes they're very self-conscious and they don't really make the best models. It's always better when you work with an actual model who isn't super self-conscious, who's not afraid to move around and be playful and have fun in the shoots. It just makes things a lot more fun and a lot easier on the photographer. <laughs> so, all right, Alexa, so you look great. I love the glasses. Lionel, let's go over here. So let's talk about settings real quick. Because it's so dark, I have to bump up my ambient light here. I'm shooting at ISO 800 right now. That may not be enough. So we're gonna find out what this looks like here in just a minute. Got to get Alexa in the shot. You can see her right there. If, you're on the, if you can see that in the back of the camera there. Right there. Can you see that? Now let's get her in focus. Beautiful. Let's do a quick test shot and see what our light looks like. Okay, so that's a little bit too much light. And that's as low as this power setting goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the power back. I'm not going to cut the power back. I'm going to take out uh, one of the flashes. I'm gonna, I have two flashes in there. I'm going to shut one of them off. So, hold on. Just an important observation here. I don't know exactly what the correlation is between ISO and flash, but what I have learned over time is that if I bump up my ISO, it's amazing how much more sensitive to light flash is when the ISO is bumped up even a little bit. 
seems that ISO is much more impacted by flashlight than it is ambient light. So in the case of these two flashes right now, I've got two AD200s, both set at 1 1 28th power, which is next to nothing, but the subject ended up being incredibly overexposed. It's amazing how much light that is. Mm -hmm. These things are on their lowest setting right now. So I was using two AD200s. I don't need two. I only need one. So I've got one set up on 1 1 28th power. We're shooting at F2 ISO 800. All right, Alexa, hold that post for me, please. That's beautiful. Look right here into the camera. Gorgeous. Hold it. Very nice. That looks, hold that expression. I love it. Beautiful. A little bit out of focus there. Right there. Beautiful. Oh, come on, camera. Let me see. So you can see, I'm not getting a ton of bokeh with these. I want to back up just a little bit. I want you to stay where you are. That looks great. This is a very long lens. It's the kind of lens they use like in football games. What I want to do, Lionel, if you can focus the camera, if you look really closely, there's like this long corridor behind her. And I'm trying to try to frame all those door frames. See how they kind of go down like this? See so like this long corridor behind her. It should be really cool to look at. Let's adjust. You can always tell when you're using somebody else's camera, they have it set up very differently than the way I would do it. <laughs> There she is, beautiful, awesome. Hold that right there, gorgeous, beautiful. What a great expression, hold it. Play with your hair a little bit, kind of div it up just a little bit. Yeah, if you're looking off camera, that's cool. Yeah, so look off camera like you just, yes, that's beautiful. Hold that right there, hold it. I'm trying to get my camera to focus on you is proving to be a little bit of a challenge. When you're shooting portraits in low light, one of the things you should consider doing is taking advantage of your strobes modeling light. The AD200 does in fact have a modeling light, and the great thing about it is that modeling lights don't have any real impact on the scene when you're utilizing your flash, but what it will, what it will help you do is focus more accurately, more quickly, and more consistently on your subject. For whatever reason, I forgot to do that here, and I was having a heck of a time focusing on Alexa. Now, if you happen to be utilizing a strobe that doesn't have a modeling flash, you can always ask one of your friends or maybe the makeup artist or the hairstylist to flash their cell phone's flashlight onto the face of the model. It's a good alternative. It's kind of quick and dirty, but it gets the job done. One of the downsides of shooting at night like this is cameras tend to hunt a little bit. One thing we might want to do, hey girls, do you all have your cell phones with you? Yeah. Can you like put, like put your flashlight on her? Yeah. And just from outside of the camera. Yes, that's, that, there we go. So uh, what that does, by putting some flashlight on her, it gives her a little bit of contrast. And now I can actually see her and the camera can see her now. And uh, Alexa, that's beautiful. I don't want you to move. Stay right there. Hold on one second. I want to show you what we can do here. This should be really, really nice. Lionel can still hear me because he's tied into the mic. So raise your hands up just a teeny weeny bit. Hold that right there. Be oh, that's beautiful. Let me see. Damn. That's awesome. Good job. Hold that right there. Love that expression. You look like a 1950s pinup. It's beautiful. Hold it. Awesome. Smiley, show me some teeth. Beautiful. You kind of threw your head back a little bit, and I kind of like that you were doing it inside. Gorgeous. Hold it. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. So, do it. Yeah, so we get, we get some great flash. So because, you can tell it's, ooh, that's awesome. Yeah, do that. Do that. Let me see. Perfect. Tilt your head a little bit this way and raise your chin up slightly. Uh, actually, bring it down again. Like, you know, have you ever seen the movie Grease? So if you bring your, ooh, that's perfect. Hold that. Awesome. So because it's so dark, what's happening is you are beautifully lit, but everything behind you is going pitch black, which poses some problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to change environments because we have more light over here because the sun went down over there. We're totally shielded here. So we're pretty much in a tunnel. So we're going to go in the back. So let's head over, head over to the side. Yes. And you know what? Oh, thank you. You know what? Let's go over to these buildings here. We can probably do something with those, all those lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's head over there.
windows. The other scene was just entirely too dark. Here we have a lot more ambient light behind us and I can make Alexa pop off the page here. It should look really, really beautiful. All right, Alexa, you ready? Gorgeous, let me see what that light looks like. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes, it's gorgeous, let me see. Hold that, yeah, get her posing up there. Yeah, do stuff like that, that's awesome, hold it, awesome. With your chin down like that, kind of bring your eyes up to the camera. Beautiful, hold it. What a great expression, hold it. Beautiful. I'm not getting all of you in the shot because you're, what's happening is you're spreading yourself out of the shot just a little bit, so I'm gonna back up just a little bit more. When you do that, what happens is you come, your, your arms go out of the frame. This is a fixed focal length lens, so it, it, I can't, I'm stuck with the scene that I have. So if you move too much, you'll step out of the scene. Try to. Like you're, a little, like you're standing at a teacup or something. Let me see how that looks. Where's my focal point? There it is. You can always tell when you're playing with a buddy's camera because it's totally, oh, that's beautiful. It's set up so differently than what I would do. Let's get your arms separated from your body just a little bit. One thing about, so let's just talk about that for a second. So for women in general, you want to have your, your elbows slightly off your body, but not too mechanical. Like if you're standing like this, this is good because this is almost too like high schoolish, like kind of prom pose-ish. But if, you're, if you just have a little separation here, here, like that's great because now I can see the gap between your arm and your hip. Nice waist. Yes, as opposed to a block. Men are built like blocks. If we stand like this, we look great. Girls, you want to get a little separation. This is good for you guys, too, with your iPhone pictures. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, too, you want to angle your body a little bit, too, right? If you're square to the camera, that actually adds weight, unless you're waif thin. Even, even then, I can, I can make a waif girl look terrible if I pose her incorrectly. But if you just angle your body a little bit, it cuts off like 10 pounds, just like that. Now, you don't want to go sideways, though, because then that brings everything out. That doesn't look good either. So you want to get, like, 45 degrees. So and you always see the girls do it. They're always, they'll line up with their iPhones, and they'll all be like... You know, they all go sideways like this. It's hysterical. So once I teach that trick, every girl is like, oh, how do I take off 20 pounds? <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So, Lionel, for your sake and for the sake of this video, we have one AD200 flashing right now. We're at ISO 800. We're at F2. And we're shooting 1 125th of a second at F2. That's, hold that pose right there, Lex. That's beautiful. Right there awesome that's gorgeous i'm not still not getting a ton of ambient light in this scene because it's still kind of fading to black but i'm getting some of it back there i'm sure i can raise a lot of that in the shadows gorgeous hold it love that expression so here i want you to do something with your hands like kind of maybe just like cut, uh for now yeah I'll put those down maybe just like frame your face with your hands <laughs> yes that's perfect hold it that's awesome one two beautiful chin up slightly Beautiful. Smile. Show me some teeth. You have great teeth. Show me. There you go. Good. Hold it. Awesome. That's so Marilyn Monroe. I love it. Let me see. That's beautiful. Here, let me just turn this sideways a little bit. I'm going to try to bring in a little bit of the background into this shot. So I'm going to raise the ISO just a little bit, which might be dangerous because... So again, Lionel, I'm not really teaching you a whole lot right now. I'm just kind of shooting and having a little bit of fun with this. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Yes. So, Alexa, if you can, try to angle yourself towards the light instead of away from the light. Yes, you got it. Good. Ooh, that's cute. Hold that. Let me see. One, two. Oh, wait a minute. Beautiful. Good. Cute scene. Ha. <laughs> Very good. No, it's good. It's like sort of like Greece, 1950. Oh, that's beautiful. Hold that expression right there. I love that. Hold that. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Keep those eyes open. Awesome. Awesome. Play with your hair a little bit. Yes, smile big, beautiful, laughing, you're having a great time. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do, that's all 200 F2. I'm going to switch to the 85 1.8 with the Z. Let's see what we get.